Welcome to the Good News Radio Broadcast. Hello, this is Brenda Harris, greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Before Jesus, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. What does it mean to be born again? Nicodemus, one of the councilmen of the Pharisees in the Bible, acknowledged that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus told him that he must be born again. Nicodemus asked him what that meant, and Jesus explained that the spirit of man must be born again or made new. Nicodemus couldn't understand how a person could enter his mother's womb again to be born again. Jesus explained that he was not speaking of the flesh, but of the spirit. Jesus said that Nicodemus would not see the kingdom of God if he was not born again. Born again means born from above. Nicodemus needed a spiritual transformation in his heart. We all need to be born again. Why do we need to be born again? It says in the book of Ephesians that we all were dead in our sins. Romans says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, we were all spiritually dead. When we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, our souls are transformed. They are made new. I know that when I was a little kid and asked the forgiveness of Jesus, it felt like a big old heavy burden was lifted from the inside of me. I felt the difference right away and have never forgotten it. I heard about a man who was in prison. After he was in prison, he became born again. After he got out of prison, he met the minister who had been a good influence on him through TV while he was in prison. He told the minister about his experience. The minister gave him a Bible. The ex-convict broke down and cried. He was asked why he was crying. He said, God is showing me that he loves me. I am forgiven of my sins. This is the first gift that I have ever received. In the past, I've always obtained things by stealing them. When you are born again, God wipes the slate clean. He no longer remembers all the bad things you have done. He renews your mind and spirit. You're a new man. And then you are God's child. And God treats you with love. And he shows you the way. Another testimony was shared on the 700 Club about a prisoner who found God in solitary confinement. I will share it with you. When Todd Ayer breathed the pine-scented woods of northern Arizona, it's not just clean air he smells, it's the smell of freedom. After making some tragic choices as a young man, Todd spent 17 years behind bars. He said, I knew God. I knew his presence. I never did one thing in my life that was wrong that I didn't know was wrong, but I chose the wrong path. I chose the world, and it took me down a bad path. Todd began drinking and doing drugs by the time he was 12. Todd had a restless soul, and during his teens, hitchhiked across the country several times. Then on Super Bowl Sunday, 1986, when he was just 24, his life changed forever. Todd shot and killed a man who was abusing a relative. He then drove straight to the police station and turned himself in. He said, I did what I did and wasn't hiding from anyone, and I was willing to pay the cost for it, but I had no idea of the cost of just how high it would be. Todd received a 27-year sentence and was sent to a federal prison in South Carolina. Prison life is hard, and the violent generally excel. I lost hope. It's a rough environment, and I was told pretty early on that because of my pride, I probably wouldn't live through it. I had a goal. When my day came, when they took me out, I was going to take a whole bunch of them with me. In prison, Todd started buying and selling drugs and developed a reputation for his ruthlessness. One time, he nearly killed another inmate in a knife fight and was put into solitary confinement. I was what they called SSR, which stands for Substantial Security Risk, which meant that the three times a week I was let out for a shower, I had to be in chains and belly shackles. I didn't think I would ever see the outside world again. I lost all hope. I just kind of felt like, well, this is what I'm destined for. 
Todd always kept a Bible in his cell, but says he seldom read it. I looked at it one day. It was lying there with dust on it about that thick, and I said, Lord, I know there's peace in them words, and man, I need some peace. I'm just sick in my heart. And I said, But Lord, that Bible, it's kind of hard to understand. If I had something to help me understand it, I'd try to read it. Then the very next day, I got a manila envelope in the mail. In it was a book, Knowing and Experiencing God was the title, How to Understand Your Bible. So I knew that God had heard me. That book came from Todd's aunt and uncle, who had been praying for him for years. For Todd, it was a life-changing moment. When I got that book and I knew that God had heard me, and more than that, he just wasn't through with me, that was it. I broke down and I cried for about two days. I just said, God, I'm yours. If you, the maker of heaven and earth, this wonderful, merciful, kind God, can still love me after the monster I have been, I said, I'm on your team. I'm yours. Send me where you'll send me and I'll go. Ask me to do whatever it is. I don't care how hard it is. I'll just do it. And God just started teaching me how to minister. Todd continued to pray and study his Bible in his cell. One hot summer day, another inmate borrowed his fan. After a little while, he called me and says, Hey man, you want your fan back? And the Lord kind of spoke to my heart and said, Give it to him. I said, Give it to him? Lord, it's a hundred plus degrees in here. Are you crazy? And God said, No. You've been telling him what Jesus would do. It's time to show him what Jesus would do. And it just blew him away when I gave him that fan. Then an amazing thing happened. It cooled off in my cell, and I bet you it wasn't but 70 degrees in that cell. So through that little bit of obedience, God started manifesting himself. Todd began sharing with the other inmates what he had learned from the Bible about Jesus. Each time I would do something like that, I would grow spiritually and my faith would get stronger. And he'd always give me these little beautiful miracles, which said to me, good job. One time I said, Lord, I'm so tired of looking at all this wire and these fences and this concrete. I would just love to see something pretty. And it did no more get out of my mouth. Then three morning doves lit in front of my cell. And those same doves came back every day until I got out of prison. As I started seeking him and searching for him, he just started revealing his beauty and his wonder and his majesty. But more than that, he was communing with me. The God of heaven and earth was communing with this old convict down here. The drastic change in Todd's character got the attention of the other inmates. The old-timers, when I got my heart right with the Lord, instead of shunning me, they surrounded me. They were tickled for me. They were happy for me. They saw the peace and the joy in my heart, and it gave them hope. In 2003, Todd was granted an early parole due to good behavior. Shortly after, he met and married Lori, and they started a family. The couple and their daughter, Kendra, recently moved to Arizona, where they manage Camp Grace, a summer camp for young people. My God is an awesome God, and He is not limited. He's given us the Holy Spirit, but it's time for you and me and others to step up to the plate and walk in the faith that is ours, and walk in the gifts of the Spirit that is ours. Todd believes his freedom from prison was a miracle. And he still believes in a God that makes miracles happen every day. One of the reasons nobody gets to see the miracles of God is because they don't put their full trust in him. Learn to trust him. Put your faith in him. He'll provide for you. And he won't just provide for you. He'll bless your socks off. But you got to trust him. And now please place your trust in Jesus today. Pray to him and asked him to forgive you of your sins, and then you will be born again. And now this concludes the message today. Again, this is Brenda Harris, blessing you in the name of Jesus. May God's face shine upon you and show you 
great favor.